Hey fellas, I hope you all are having a very suave day. So lately I've been thinking about making a video about the types of possibly unique foods that you can get in Germany, just so people can see what types of foods are out there and appreciate the diversity in this world. So I'm heading to a supermarket called Erika in around 10 to 15 minutes. So don't click out, join me and you will see for yourself just some of the special things that you can get in a good old German supermarket. Let's go. Hey guys, so on my way to the grocery store at the moment, what I'm going to be focusing on is not necessarily the ingredients or foods that I would typically get as part of my prepping grocery haul. I would be focusing more so on the things that I believe are pretty common in Germany and pretty unique in Germany. So there are some things that despite living here for around about five years now, I still haven't tried and I'd be interested in trying one or two of those items as well. So one thing to keep in mind when you are going to a German supermarket, specifically the German ones like Erika, Kaufland, Real, Rewe for example, my advice would be to bring like a 50 cent coin or a one euro or two euro coin because you'll need it to get a trolley out and that's super important especially when you're shopping by yourself. When you're actually paying for the items they won't pack your bags for you so it's important to actually have a have a trolley ready. So because I hate taking cash with me in Germany, I have something that's called a trolley shark. Of course, there are similar products to this, but it's usually on my keys. I always take my keys with me. Um, and so you can just stick it in the trolley. You don't have to worry about whether or not you have a coin with you. But top tip if you actually live here. You can just look at the selection of the bread here. Everything is super fresh. They bake it several times a day. Most of the time you can see it constantly being refilled and dropped by the bakers in the back. But we're going to get a few because there's a German ingredient that we're going to get that requires fresh bread. Yeah, look, you can go over here, Kartoffelbrötchen. So it's got potato in it, just different sorts of white breads. Over here, this one's got some seeds, chia seeds, I believe. Wait, no, these are chia seeds. These are poppy seeds. So these are pretty common in Germany, they're called pom bears. Ketchup is one of my favorites, so let's try that. I've had it before. This is a must when you're coming to Germany for the first time and you want to try something unique, definitely get one of these. So knickknacks, pretty popular in Germany as well. It's from a company called Lorenz. Uh, they have the original ones as well. I'm not sure if we should get it. Should we get it? Get the barbecue flavor or the original? Which one do you like more? Okay, let's try the barbecue. So I personally have never had these before, but I always see it in German supermarkets. The Eintopf, right, it's called. So it's basically like a stew in a sausage shaped packaging. I believe you just put it in a pot, warm it up and you can eat it straight away. Grünkohl, this is like uh, kale. You've got a potato soup with Vienna style sausages. You've got Solyanka, is that how you pronounce it? Okay, so it's a Russian sort of stew. And you've got like a carrot sort of stew. So when you look at it, it's kind of like, it has to be bad for you, but um, it could be really good. Who knows? Let's just try one. Let's try this one, because it sounds the most German, Kartoffelsuppe. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah, do that then, because it's so unique. Grützwurst. So it's blood sausage with grits, right? So I'm not going to get that because I don't think I will finish it and I don't want to waste food as well. So the reason I wanted to get bread before was uh, specifically because of this. I know that it's German. It's very common in Germany to have this with bread and I'll show you back when I get home, but uh, let's take one of these and we'll try it out. Oh, check this out here. I don't even know what that is. I always see it. Is it like liver? So I believe it's like a liver paste with some sort of jelly or aspic. And uh, I believe you just paste it on your bread, just like you would with, um, you know, met. Come on guys, how bad can it be? Yeah, I've seen these around sometimes in like a cake sort of mold. It's super funky. It looks super bad for you, but I've always wanted to try it anyway, just because we're open-minded. I believe you just paste it on bread or something like that. I think you can also eat it direct. I've seen these sometimes filled with seafood as well and sometimes with egg. I can't find it in the shop at the moment, but 
I might just go for this and then try it out. Basically, it's like some sort of meat cake that uh, is molded by aspic or some sort of meat broth. Let's try it out. So check this out here. Super Dickmans. How's this even legal? So I've had these before. They're super, super sweet. I won't get them again, but uh, if you're into sweet stuff, then you can give it a try. Let's get that. I don't know, I can't remember if I've tried this or not, but I think it's essentially just like a biscuit with chocolate, but it's very iconic, I believe, and Leibniz is definitely a German brand. Yeah, you might not see Cadbury chocolates here. I mean, some supermarkets do stock them, depending on how international they are, but this is the equivalent of Cadbury chocolates in Germany. So if you're like, where the hell is the Cadbury chocolates and you're, you've come to Germany for, for a visit, then look for Milka. I think it's from the same brand. What is it again? Mondelez International? Oh yeah, and Rittersport, right? So let's get a Rittersport as well. I feel like that's pretty German. You have a whole selection of different flavors here, but Rittersport in itself, the brand is very German. You might see it in Switzerland or Austria or around the nearby countries of uh, Germany, but uh, I haven't seen it in Australia. We usually just have Cadbury and uh, other very common international brands. So we can get one as well. Maybe we can get this one. So we try different flavors for you guys. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, let's try one of these. I haven't had it before. I always see it in the supermarkets, but I haven't had it before. So it wouldn't be a German grocery haul without getting a Haribo, so gummy bears. You guys have probably seen this internationally, right? So this is the original one, super chewy. I like the texture of these. But as you can see, everything that's in blue over here is from Haribo. So they have insane selection of not only gummy bears, but just sweets in general. You can also get a massive tub if you'd like. Okay, let's get that. Before we move on, check out our grocery haul selection. It's like, I wouldn't want to have this diet on a weekly basis. A bit embarrassing going to the cashiers actually, but whatever. Pre-peeled potatoes in a jar. I mean, they, yeah, they probably taste like potatoes, but uh, I'm not really sure why you wouldn't get just like normal potatoes. Someone just spewed in the supermarket. Vorsicht! <laughs> so this is apparently, I mean, I like it, I always drink it, but apparently it's super common for the student life to drink this. It keeps you awake, but not as much as coffee, I believe. So it's kind of like a steady energy level. It's really, really good. The first time I had it, it was a bit weird. Very carbonated, but uh, it's good. Let's try it. In the pingui. Let's pick that. And let's pick this up as well. Milchschnitte. So this is rice pudding. This is semolina pudding. This is actually really good. Let's, let's try this. Yeah, we can just get this one. I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do with this later on. Okay, so the reason that I got bread earlier from the supermarket is that uh, I'm going to be making a Zwiebel Metwurst on bread. This is very typical in Germany to have, I believe, as a typical breakfast item. First of all, I don't have a bread knife, but this is how you would do it. I'm going to show you guys how I see it made. I've had it before, and to be honest, I actually don't mind it. So first, you cut the bread open, paste some butter. I've actually seen in the bakeries and the shops that sell this, they actually load on quite a lot of butter, but of course it's up to you how much you want to put on. Okay, so so far bread and butter, and you can directly put your metwurst in. So what this is essentially is raw meat. It usually comes in either pork or beef uh, that's been cured in salt, and uh, it, that's essentially what it is. So let's open this bad boy up. And you would put around yay much onto the bread and spread it out like you would with your typical Vegemite toast. So that's what it looks like. 
you can pretty much have it directly like this if you would like. A lot of shops, they put like pepper on there as well, which I can do right now. But before I do that, a really nice addition to it is actually to put some onions on there. It definitely gives the flavor of the dish a bit of a kick. So that is all you guys need. Cool, and to finish it off, you can put some pepper. And that is usually how you would see it in a bakery or the shops that sell it. And you can just enjoy it as is. So let me give you a bit of a taste test. By the way, all these foods that we've bought, I will try them in different times of the day because, because I care about my health somewhat. So. Let's try it. Hmm. Wanna try? <laughs> That's pretty good. It's not bad. So essentially it tastes like raw meat with onion, but of course the meat is salted, it's cured. So it has somewhat of a flavor to it and the pepper gives it a really nice kick. So thumbs up. So the other thing that we bought from the grocery store was the Club Mata. So it's Mata, so typical Latin American drink that uses a particular leaf. Actually, we have um, Mata over here, like the actual Mata. You just put it in um, like a tea strainer, just like any other tea and then drink. It's really nice. This one specifically is uh, carbonated and has a little bit of sugar. So um, tastes more like a refreshing drink rather than a tea. It's a really common drink that you see around uh, all over Germany. So personally, I'm not that much of a carbonated drink sort of a guy, but uh, this is okay. Um, the carbonation is pretty insane though. I think it's on the higher levels. You can see how much carbonation there is, but in terms of flavor, it's relatively mild. Tastes really good. Uh, the first time I drank it, it took a little bit of getting used to, but it's uh, it's really nice. Tian really likes it too. First time I drank it, it tastes like ashtray. I don't feel that. <laughs> I don't see why it tastes like ashtray. What does it taste like? It tastes a bit like mata tea, if you've ever had that, or just a general tea with a little bit of sugar and carbonated. That's what it tastes like. A little bit bitter, but if you're into that sort of stuff, it's amazing. Hey guys, so it's a new day and new day equals new German snack. We've just gone out for a morning run and what better way to replenish your energy than to have a Trüffel Leber Pastete. So I've never had this before as I mentioned in the supermarket. Um, I'd be interested to see like if, if, if anyone's German here to see if they actually have this like you know on a regular basis like do you guys like this? How do you eat it as well? Like do you just paste it on toast bread is that how you would do it normally or like eat it direct I don't know it's a uh, liver paste I guess I guess it's somewhat similar to Leberwurst or liverwurst I think um, with a little bit of aspic on top I imagine that's what it is let's make some toast and we'll see how it is I'm also not exactly sure if I'm supposed to be putting like uh, butter or anything like that but uh, let's just have it directly as is, so we can experience the actual flavor. This is also very affordable, by the way, so it's 179. So let's have a good, decent chunk here. Okay, so I would say that was a pretty decent chunk for an initial product review. But um, yeah, I just pasted it directly on there. I couldn't spread the aspic or whatever it is, like the meat jelly across the, the bread. So I'm just gonna taste it one without and one with. Here we go. So, if you guys have ever had liverwurst before, it tastes pretty much like that. It's got a bit of a bitter taste to it. So, I don't know, I'm not sure if you guys season it with pepper or something like that, or if you eat it directly, but it's not bad. But I haven't had it with aspic before, so let's try that. Mmm. Mmm. I actually really like that. It's, it's got a bit of a sour flavor to it which kind of couples well with the bitterness of the Leberwurst. 
I don't know, I would say six out of 10. So as a kid, I was always self-conscious about this, but when I was eating, you might've noticed my eye, my right eye going up and down. So that's called Marcus Gunn jaw winking syndrome. It's basically an uncontrolled movement between two muscle groups on my face. My eyelids usually go up and down when my jaw moves up and down. So I can't help it. It looks a bit funny. I apologize. Hmm. Tastes like childhood. Tastes like childhood? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not for me, but I promise you nothing will go to waste. I'll have this within the next couple of days. Okay guys, so I thought just because we reviewed this already, might as well continue with something that's very similar or at least looks very similar. Yeah, this is exactly what's in the realm of what you would call a meat jello. But I'm just going to eat it directly to experience the actual flavor of it. It might be too salty or something like that, but I'll let you guys know. So let's cut a decent chunk out. Okay, so it's got some, it's got some weight to it, but it's also got some um, kind of restriction to it when you, when you cut through. It doesn't exactly look that appetizing. So if I didn't say it already, it's called Zutze in Aspik. Um, I don't know what Zutze translates to in English. I, I don't know if there's actually a word for that, but Aspik is basically just meat broth. Um, it, it acts as a sort of mold um, for whatever content is inside it. So let's try it. Okay, definitely more on the salty side. Best way I can describe it is kind of like a roast pork that's extremely salty. Um, the jelly doesn't really taste like anything. I think it just adds a bit of a saltiness to it as well. So it also depends on whether or not you like those sorts of textures. But to me, sometimes I can't handle the texture of pure fat. And this sort of aspic kind of uh, reminds me of eating pure fat. This one was a little bit more expensive than the liver paste. I think I slightly like this one more. Hey guys, just finished work and I'd like to try some of the additional things that I bought from the supermarket the other day. I'm not sure if I can finish everything all in one sitting, but I'll try my best. I've got seven items here on the sofa with me and I'm gonna start with this one, Leibniz. So I don't think I've tried this in Germany before, but as far as I can see, it looks to me like it's simply just a biscuit with a chocolate on top, a semi-sweet coating apparently. So let's try it out. Cheers. I can't believe something so simple can be so good. So essentially it is just uh, chocolate uh, on top of biscuit. The chocolate is definitely not on the sweeter side, which I'm a big fan of, eight out of 10. Okay, so the next item that we have on the list is the Haribos. This one is a special edition because it has two gummy bears in one sort of gummy. You break it apart and one is sweet and one is sour. The packet is called Bärchen Pärchen. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So that was the sour one. Wait, that one was the sour one. <laughs> I didn't even know which one was. So the texture is absolutely amazing. I love Haribo. I've always loved Haribo. You can also get them in Australia. I got it right this time. That one was the sour one. So good. I love the flavors. I will definitely, definitely eat the rest of that. Okay, so the next one on the list is the Rittersport chocolates. Looks super fancy, but I realized that I probably won't eat all of it for you, especially all in once today. So I'm probably gonna pick just a couple of flavors and give you my honest review. So I'm going with this one first. This one is yogurt, so I believe it's got a little bit of yogurt in it along with chocolate. I haven't had the yogurt flavor in a very long time, but I think that is more on the sweeter side for me. I would much prefer like a semi-sweet chocolate or a darker chocolate. What I believe this is, is just standard chocolate outside with a yogurt filling inside. So the yogurt filling is on the sour side, the chocolate is on the sweeter side. So I guess it pairs quite well with it if you're into that sort of thing. Let's try one more. So this one is Knusper Cakes. 
So it's like crunchy biscuit. It kind of reminds me of the Leibniz that I just had. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. I mean, isn't that just, isn't that just like what we had with Leibniz? I mean, maybe it tastes similar. Let's see. Scratch what I just said. Absolutely not similar. So the one from Rittersport is way sweeter simply because they use a different type of chocolate. And the one from Leibniz is much, much more mild with a darker chocolate. I definitely am a fan of the Leibniz one more. Okay, so taking a break from the sweets, the next up we have what's called knickknacks. And these I've had before. They're very, very nice. It's a good uh, addictive snack. This is what they look like. And essentially what it is, is a peanut inside with a battered coating on the outside that is heavily seasoned. So extremely flavorful. This one is barbecue flavored, so it has a bit of a different kick to it as opposed to the original. I wouldn't want to have this with me in front of a table during work because I'll nibble at it for the entire day. Okay, so next one on the list is Hombeer. This one is extremely popular in Germany. Um, it's really airy, it's made out of potato powder and it's just a really nice light snack. And I must warn you though, once you open this, you will not be able to stop. So good. So the pom bears are so airy that when you put it in your tongue, and you just don't bite, it just melts in your mouth. Amazing. Next up we have Riesen. Okay, it's not that big. Here it is. I wonder why it's called Riesen. To be honest with you, I've never had this in Germany before. Um, I always see it in the supermarkets, but uh, never gotten around to it, to actually getting it. Mmm. So it's a chewy chocolate caramel that's covered in dark chocolate. It is amazing. I'm not a big fan of sweets that are super sweet. This is not sweet at all. So when you see it on the shelf, it's, you know, sitting alongside the Snickers bars, the Mars bars. So you just think it's just absolutely hella sweet, but it's actually not sweet at all. It's really good. If you guys are a fan of dark chocolate or chocolate that is not that sweet, this is perfect. It's amazing. I actually really like that a lot. Okay, so just got these two bars from the fridge. One is called Kinder Pingui and the other one is called Milchschnitter. Let's try the Kinder Pingui first. This is a milk bar that pretty much has chocolate wrapped around it. So the filling has a different texture than the Milchschnitter that I will try later on. But let's try this one first and see how it goes. Mmm. So extremely soft both on the outside and on the inside. The inside is relatively sweet with a milk filling and the outside is chocolate that's extremely thin and breakable. I mean, if you're going to the fridge looking for a perfect snack, then this is a really good option. It's not too filling. It doesn't make you feel that bad. And overall, it tastes really good. Okay, so the next one is Milchschnitter. This is translated in English to milk slice, literally. And it is different to the Kinder Pingui slice that we had because the outside is more of a spongy sandwich type of chocolate as opposed to a thin sheet of chocolate wrapped around the milk filling. There you go. So this one has more of a sour tone to it. You can see on the top and the bottom it has some sort of chocolate sponge layer which is really really nice. The texture is amazing and the inside in terms of the milk it's more on the whipped cream sort of side, um, like a hardened whip, whipped cream, if you like. If I was to choose between this one or the Kinder Pingui, to be honest, I would probably choose this one. Um, it's a little bit less sweet, and for some reason, I don't feel as bad eating this one as I do with the Kinder Pingui. I definitely have to exercise after this. Hey guys, so it's day three, and we've got three more food items left to go. We've got the iron top, which is the stew. We've got the grease pudding, which is the semolina pudding. And we've got the fish that we bought that I will make something out of later on. So let's try the kartoffelsuppe here. And I think what you have to do is just to cut it, let it all run out into a pot, 
boil it and you're pretty much good to go. And now we wait. Okay, so it's pretty much hot. Let me tell you what's inside. First thing is the uh, sausages that are sliced into really thin slices. Uh, I believe there's some carrot in there, some chunks of carrot and some chunks of potato. That's pretty much it. So that's pretty much all I did guys. I didn't do anything. I didn't season it. I just cut it from the packaging and put it straight in a pot. So how easy is that? So do you know what I think this would be really good for? If you're coming to Germany to visit, you're in a hotel room or an Airbnb, you've got nothing besides a stovetop and a pot, and you want to cook up something real quick, you can just get one of these from the supermarket, and away you go. You can serve it with bread or croutons or something like that. Awesome. I think I'd give that like an 8 out of 10. So let me taste the Kries pudding as well while you're here. This is a very common brand in Germany, so Müller. It's pretty much just like a pudding with semolina in it and it tastes amazing. It's a very mild snack that you can have any time of the day. So this one is on the sweeter side, but it's definitely not as sweet as having a straight up vanilla pudding or something like that. So the main ingredients in this is basically just milk, sugar, cream, and semolina. Creamy, milky, refreshing, and overall a very nice snack to have. Okay guys, so we're up to the last snack. We've made it. This is what I ended up purchasing from the supermarket the other day, Matthias filets, so herring fish. And the reason that I got it is because I wanted to make something called Fischbrötchen, which in certain parts of Germany is not that popular, but in parts near Hamburg, in the northern part of Germany, they are extremely popular for locals and also for tourists. Some people put pickles in there, some people put mayonnaise, and some people put eggs in there, so it all depends on what your personal preference is. I'm going to be making this fish protein with just the bread, fish, a little bit of pepper and some onions. I guess it's, it's kind of a thing, isn't it, in Germany? It's bread, it's onion, and it's your protein of choice. So before we move on, let's just chuck some butter on there. You can also put lettuce on there as well, just so it gives it a little bit of a, a nice color. So I've got some uh, sliced lettuce in there um, from, from the other things that I've been prepping. Voila. It looks not that great, um, partially because I made it. But if you guys ever visit Hamburg, you go to the stalls, order a fish Fischbrötchen, it's an experience in itself. And uh, you just have to be open-minded, guys. So the fish that we bought is on the sour and salty side, um, simply because it needs to be preserved. It's pickled fish, um, so that's uh, why people balance it out with uh, onion and all the other ingredients that I haven't bothered to add. So I would say 8 out of 10. So we made it guys, we tried all the snacks that we bought from the German supermarket the other day. It was insane. My favorite was by far the Riesenbars. I totally didn't expect it. It wasn't as sweet as what I thought it was and I will definitely be buying those again. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video. Mind you, there are so many different snacks and foods that you can get in this country. So let me know if you would like to see more and I'll see you guys next time.